Guys, I'm here with Barton. Barton, um, you've inspired myself and many people for a very long time, mate, in many aspects, surf, philosophy, health, which we're going to talk a little bit about. Yeah, yeah. And we thought, you know, we're going to do a treatment with Barton. Why not have a candid chat about all these things while we're doing it? So, oh, so gnarly. Right that's there. what we're going to work in on there, mate. Oh, mate, <laughs> that thing's electric. As we talk, just yes, to mate. start, mate, what, what year were you world champ? I was uh, world champ in 1988. 88. Yeah. And back then, mate, yeah. part of your preparation and, and everything else, how important was health and what you perceived as necessary, I guess, supplementation yeah. and, and exercise? How important was it back then for you? Um, it wasn't really very important. Right. You were kind of a surfer more than you were an athlete. Right. Um, but we lived in a time when the idea was they were going to sell it as a sport. It was being packaged sure. and, and sold as a professional sport. <laughs> and so as a byproduct of that, our mindset had to change, really. We had to adapt, and we were the sort of ambassadors of the professional sport. Sure, the start of becoming professional. And yes. Was that and, time and, and prize athletic. money went up and yeah. athletes started to take it a little more seriously? Yeah, and I think Tom Carroll kind of led the way a lot with the training and yeah. the athletic yeah. approach. And he was so good that it made us all think that maybe we needed to do it too, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, but it, and it slowly became more and more important, I suppose. But I just experienced, I, I went, um, first year was 83. I went 13th, and then next year I went 8th, and then the next year I went 2nd. And I was like, 13th, 8th, 2nd, 1st is just right there at 8th. This hasn't been that hard. You know what I mean? Yeah, this is one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Imagine if I... your fourth year, was it you won the World Cup? No, no. That, yeah. but, so I went 13th, 8th, 2nd, okay. and then imagine if I train. Ah, you know, imagine, yes, if I, yes, yeah. well, imagine if I work out, then I'll, you know, I'll get there. And so I started training... With with uh, at the uh, what was called the Peninsula Sports Medicine Centre, and they had a, a triathletes training there, and I was training there with them with the triathletes. It was uh, without question the fittest I'd ever been. You know, we would do. They'd have questionnaires. You'd fill in. You know, how am I feeling before this sure, session? Sure, sure, sure. A happy B weak C. You know, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, and all of a sudden you're like thinking about how you feel, and you go and so. I went out on tour that year, fittest I'd been, full of gusto, and went back to 12. From, wow, I was going to ask you that corresponded with performance. And yeah, result. second to 12. Okay. And I went, you know what? Fuck training. Okay. That stuff's no good. Sure. You know what I mean? Sure. It was my inability to manage my expectation from the... I was doing it to win. Yeah. And if you didn't win, then it wasn't working. Okay, sure. You know what I mean? Sure. So the, you weren't looking at it with the, with the right Mindset. mindset. You know, you needed to recognise that it was just good for you and your life. Yep. And do it not to not because of surfing and not for a result. Did you change after that, mate? No. Well, any I other did. Form of training, or I just kind of just went back to surfing sure. a lot. You know, sure. and just being me. I always did yoga. I was the most flexible person I knew. So I was going to ask um, you about yoga, mate. How yeah. did that improve your surfing and mindset? And at the same time, I, as a young man, I went to the ashram down in Manly and learned, yeah, 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 learned okay. meditation and yeah. sort of started to understand the potential of the mind yeah. and always valued that side of things, the yoga, the meditation, the visualisation, the, the awareness of self and trying to grow that thing that you were, you know, outside of your fears and... And so I suppose that was a really, that that experience with the training and then even, you know, a couple of times I started martial arts or I'd do gym or I'd go do a weight program, but I never stuck with anything, as you can see. <laughs> Any reason um, for that? Did you always no, equate that just, to something, oh, I'm not getting this result, so... No. I just, well, I think it was equatable to a bunch of things. I used to look at the gym and people lifting weights and look at it themselves in mirrors as wankers. Right. Yeah. Culturally. Sure. Well, I didn't. I wasn't going to a gym. Yeah. I'm going to wear the flex in there and look at myself and be like, "Yes, look at me." Yeah, yeah. I was yeah. like, "What a pack of wankers." Yeah. That's how we we were. People yeah. doing yoga on the beach didn't exist. People thought I was a wanker because I would stretch before I'd surf. Yeah. Sure. That didn't happen. Really. You yeah. know. So it was a very different time, and there was. 
strong peer groups, there were strong ideas in your own head, um, in my head, about what that was. And it, I suppose I was always unbalanced physically and cerebrally or mentally. I was always more in here than in this. Did you find that yoga helped you maintain at least that yeah, balance? Yeah, yeah, but not, you know, I needed to, I, I was, a, you know, I'm a skinny guy. I needed yeah. to, I needed to move some heavy weight around, I'd say, and build some strength and, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, and I suppose as we get older, that becomes more and more important, they yeah. say, eh? yeah. And, mate, so you're 60. Is that right? 60. I'm in my 60th year. Okay. So when, when people call themselves 59, 59 is done. Mate. You aren't 59. True, true, you are hanging yeah, on to something yeah, for 12 yeah, more yeah, months. Yeah. It's yeah. done. It's done. Yeah. So people go, how do you go 60, mate? Because I'm in my 60th yeah. year. I don't yeah. 59 is yeah. not what I am. Yeah, totally get that. <laughs> and, mate, there's a lot of people that are probably surfers, obviously, but others mm. thinking, okay, well, at 60, I want to be performing like this. You're still very active. You're surfing. You've got... You know, you yeah. have a young son, so any, what's your angle on that? Is it, has surfing, the surfing lifestyle resulted mm. in you being healthy and able to do that? Yeah. Or are there, I guess, lessons that you could pass on to others to have and help them get mm. to this state or yeah. change the state they're in to be able to modify it to what you're yeah. in now? I think you've just got to be happy to live yours, you know, live your journey. Yeah. And it's going to go up and down and round and round and have good times and bad times and great times and sad times, you know. Sure, it's just the sure. way the journey is. And if you're in the habit of judging moments... Sorry, oh, mate. Yeah, that back down. That was nothing. Yeah. If you're in that moment... Of, up, sorry, up towards your ear as we speak. Yeah. yeah. So um, take it up towards your ear and down. Okay. Good. We'll do a few of those. Okay. Right up. Go for it. I know to cut you off before. Yeah, no worries. It's more important than me talking. <laughs> I've happened a lot. Yeah, I, I think, you know, my thing is I'm just grateful, mate. I'm freaking so grateful that I'm here. Yeah. That I'm still living. I'm still alive. I achieved my some of my dreams along the way that I've had. I've been able to live and achieve. And oh, I could. I'm really very grateful to, you for that, that opportunity. I think, I, and I got that because my father died when I was young, and so you knew the, um, yeah, the vulnerability of existence. You knew that it could be gone in a moment, just sure. a twist of fortune, one way or the other. And the thing you claim credit for <laughs> isn't yours anymore. Yeah. So I just try not to be. I don't feel like it's me. I don't feel like I'm anything special. I don't feel like, you know what I mean? I'm just me. I'm just an everyday bloke who had dreams and who lives in those dreams. You sure. know what I mean? I live yeah. in them, mate. I, I, love, I love surfing. I love riding. I love the ocean. I love everything it's given me. And, yeah, it did. It, it helped me and uh, with my health 100%. You know, I'm not sure that Michael Ho has ever been to a gym. I don't think he's ever, you might not have ever lifted sure, a weight, sure. right? He is the most inspirational 66-year-old that I know. Wow. What and that's the what, last so it, Yeah, he's, he's freaking incredible, incredible mate. Yeah, he yeah. proves the point. Yeah. He proves the point that this thing's important. Yeah. But, you know, I've always felt like I've been given a good carcass. Yeah. I feel like, um, you know, it's always, it's, you know, even, I, even there was a period where, you know, where you, you party and did all of that stuff and flogged yourself all night. Sure. And stayed up four nights a week till the sun came up, you know, for maybe years, you know what I mean? For a long time, flogged yourself with addiction and alcohol and drugs and partying and and then and that was the unhealthiest you I've been. That was you know, I was mentally felt pretty good. Sure. But physically I was missing I wasn't surfing a lot and and surfing's what got me back to that place. Sure. You know what I mean? And mate, what, what age is it? 20s to 30s in that, that time? No, um, for me, later, 30s or okay. 40s. Because this is really important. A lot of people think, well, you know, if they have had that sort of, you know, 20 to 30s or 30 to 40s, mm. they, it's affected them. Yeah, they can't recover. But I'm always working with restoration, yeah. and yeah. you can. You can recover from anything, The body's got the most mate. amazing yeah. ability to recover, hasn't it? Yeah. It's so smart. And, oh, you know, oh, my recovery, you know, if I was to just go through them, like even just start at the top of your head and go um, stitches in the back of the head at the box, three broken noses, 
TMJ, the tempora mandibular joint, where yeah. my bites, yeah. bottom yeah. teeth in yeah. front of the top teeth. Well, I'm thinking of your hip too. Yeah, I've done well. I've had three, well, three dislocations on this shoulder into surgery. The f- most recent injury on this shoulder into surgery, fractured wrists, fractured fingers, um, oh, ribs, done ribs, broken collarbone. Uh, yeah, these aren't even the stitches and stuff. These are just the, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. down into tearing, you know, a complete avulsion of semimembranosis, tearing my hamstring yeah, off the bone, putting it back on, hip replacements, heart attacks and stents put in, ACL on this knee, MCL on that knee, surgery on my ankle where I had so many uh, sea urchins, Varna, in my ankle. They dug for four hours, two sessions of two hours, and then said, hey, you just got to go for surgery. We can't get them all. Wow. Although you could have told me that for us. So, you know, broken toes. Sure. Um, a freak, mate. So, mate. Oh, took the fin off on here, cut the muscle there. Wow. So this thing... Took two fins off on my thigh. Um, this thing's incredibly intelligent, incredibly yeah. capable. And it can heal itself, can't it? I it's a self-healing that. mechanism. You've got to remove the blockage. Totally. Don't, if there's a blockage to your body healing, okay, it won't do it. But mm-hmm. if you remove that blockage, no matter what that is, yeah. your body will inherently head towards healing every time. That's what it does. Like I, just the other day, look. I'm yeah, t- exactly. I'm paddling, in exactly. With, paddling in with lion at Koalas. We'd never surf there and... Paddling through water I had in paddle, I just clunk and take a big chunk of skin out. And then I just think of some, it's already started healing itself. Yeah. It's just done it. Yeah. And it's starting yeah, to heal yeah, itself. Yeah, yeah. And really, I keep it clean and stuff, but it does the work. It does the work. And I have that respect in this thing. In my, oh, this is, I'm very excited. <laughs> oh, I think, attention here. Thank you, mate. So, yeah, no worries at all. My pleasure. So, yeah, mate, so, yeah, that's where I've, I've lent into the health in that way. You know, when, I, when, I, when you listen to the or read the biology of belief, Dr. Bruce Lipton, he talks about it. I'm glad you mentioned it. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 it talks about it, believing what it's told, more or sure, less. You know, sure. your, your emotions, your energy, everything driving your health towards something. So I always kind of try to keep that in mind that, you know, it's good, mate. You're a good thing. Thank you so much. I've smashed you. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> I've smashed you, and I apologise. Thank you. But, you yeah. know, thank you, mate, for being you and live with that gratitude of the self-healing thing. So there was a study this, this week that I read, an 85-year study yeah. on the elements of health. Number one, happiness. Right, was number one. Elderly people, getting people to the early age, being happy. Yeah. Number one. So very interesting that we forget how important that is. But hey, a body, a happy right. body can heal, can't yeah. it? Yeah, and chemically. Chemically as well. You know, like you, you're, you're putting the energy that you put into there. But, you know, I've always, I know it's kind of a little, <laughs> Lion's mum, Holly always says, don't you want to know what the experts think? And, no, you couldn't care. <laughs> There's absolutely no interest whatsoever in what they think. You know what I mean? That's, we're, yes. we're on this journey to find out what we think, not what they think. Yeah, I guess the wisdom of the body. That's trusting right. that. And trusting it. But I, you know, in that same way that in my professional career as a surfer, I was definitely unbalanced, I think, a little bit towards more cerebral than physical. Sure. And that was, you know, I can see that in retrospect. I am most probably still live in exactly that spot. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, mate, I wanted to ask you about your hip. Cause so yeah. we would have worked on your hip maybe 10 years ago, right, in Peru. Mm-hmm. And the, the head of the femur had gone through the acetabulum. Was that degenerated? Yeah. What blew me away back then was the fact that you were still surfing and still functional in spite of that. What, firstly, why do you think that hip got to that point of degeneration? Like, what in your life? Was it from surfing? Um, and I'm, I'm actually, yeah, I think it most probably, like, I mean, you know, obviously you grew up in a time, say, chemically, where people didn't know that they were spraying chemicals in the environment, that the lead paint on the house, sure. or, you know what I mean? So you, I think we were living around toxins that we didn't really understand, um, so I don't know what part that plays in people's health longer term. Did you feel pain, though? When, nah. When, nah. Okay. No, I always felt pretty resilient, really, and then... I think dad passing and you 
kind of taking control for your life sure. and for your destiny, for your future, yourself in your hands as an 11 year old, takes a bit of, you're empowering yourself. Sure. You kind sure. of, you know, it's a, it, was a, it was a strong, it was a strong way to be and live that I took on as I reflect on it. Um, and then there's the teenage years where, mate, I don't know that anyone's eaten as much McDonald's as I have. I was three meals a day for years. Yeah, it was the yeah. cheapest food around. Yeah. I loved yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. And it was everywhere you went on the road. If you were hitchhiking your way from Mossman to Manly or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I just ate so much of that, and then you know, I and do you still eat it now? No, I don't mm. eat it now. No, but um, I, no one ever told me it was bad. Sure. Um, so I don't know what part that played in, you know, and then you look at the years party and decade or whatever, that type of lifestyle as well, and you go, well, there's been some times in your life where you haven't, you know, times where you haven't cared about what you've eaten so much or whatever it is. Mm. Um, so I don't know what led to, I feel like Damien Hard, a lot of people from our generation have had hip replacements and maybe going down from single fins to twin fins and thrusters Gosh, that feels incredibly good right down That's there. Right, really right, right there, yeah. mate. Those long I've paddle done, outs of sunset. I've done a lot of paddling for no treatments yeah. for the last four months. <laughs> Even with Lion. I surf twice as much now because I surf and he surfs. Yeah, sure. No, really. Um, yeah, so I think that maybe going down to thrusters and the tight to the pocket surfing and the ability to pivot off your back foot and turn that board up into the lip and yep. get tight and you know, smash it and whip it back down and do it again, quick, quick, quick. That type of surfing most probably led to it, given the amount of people that are having them. Yeah, a lot of repetitive strain on the, on the hip, yeah, with load. And maybe any injuries, though? Could you look back and remember any times you were driven into the bottom and impacted the hip? Or? No, not to the no. hip, no. I feel like it was repetitive use. Yeah, sure. And then I think, too, that was most probably right around maybe when we started towing. Right, okay. Um, and you were whipping around behind a rope on a, on a board a lot, learning, doing it, you know what I mean? Yeah. There yeah, all sorts sure. of conditions, bouncing around. So there's a lot, of, a lot of pressure on that back hip when you're on, on the rope, yeah. you know? And mate, for any surfers who might be watching um, with a similar situation going with their hip, what would you say to them as far as, hey, hip replacement and how your life oh. can be in surfing after it? Oh, you game know, changer? I, yeah, it's a game changer. Yeah. I, I couldn't lift that leg, you know, very, couldn't lift it to right angles, no way near it. Um, for five years, most probably, I was in pain for a long time. It was difficult. Um, and so I would have done it earlier. I would have most probably gone in earlier. And I think it's the same now. Sure. You know, I think, sorry, I got distracted, but yeah, I think, I think it's, um, now, uh, you know, if you're in that position where you're in pain, you can't put your sock on, you can't lift your leg up, you, you can't get to your feet when you're trying to jump to your feet. I, a lot of my injuries came from that period of time because I, my, I was pushing my body to do things that physically it couldn't, and as a byproduct, I was in a lot of pain. Yeah, sure. Yeah. You know, I guess you were causing the dysfunction that would just take years to manifest in regards to pain. And that's the yeah. dangerous thing. I don't know whether you've ever thought about this, but we've got processes occurring without us knowing. And that's a scary thing. Yes. It's like right. the wear and tear on, on the tyre of a car when the wheel's misaligned. All of those things we're doing do misalign it, obviously, and the dysfunction increases. Look, ideally, we'd all get more regular body work, I guess, wouldn't yeah. we? And oh, yoga. Well, yoga would have helped you. Yoga is amazing. Yoga, Isn't meditation, uh, just stopping and breathing. You know, a lot of the breath work, the Wim Hof breath work is amazing. I love doing his stuff. I just love hearing his voice and being around his energy. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? He's so good. <laughs> the ice baths and sauna, we do that over at Jamie Mitchell's house, um, and that's amazing. Um, there's so much you can do, isn't there, now? Um, but starting with that attitude of respect for the healing abilities of your body would be, is my, is, that's me, you know, I'm going to start right Respecting there. Respecting your body. I was saying to Jason before, I was just saying, mate, I don't, he had said, how come you don't really take too many supplements? And I said, because I don't really feel them. Sure. I, don't, I take all these, I've taken so many different things over the years, I don't really feel them do anything, so 
Oh, there's been periods of time where I don't take anything and I feel good. And then there's times when, you know, around the house someone gives you something or my wife will get something in and you take it. And yeah. So I think that you said to me, the interesting thing you said to me is that you mightn't feel it, but those processes are going on in your body, as you just said, you know. Yeah, your body's not always good at advising you when there's problems. A car would advise us better than our body if there was no oil. Right. So yeah. the body will run without the oil until maybe it's too late. Exactly. And then tell you. Well, here's the question, right, mate. The right. day you had the heart attack, how did you feel in the morning? Oh, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. I had no idea. But did the problem appear that day or was it there a long time before it? And then, obviously, it's no, manifesting. Yeah, yeah it's just that day. I, I yeah. was surfing that morning. It was Australia Day. Yeah. Lion was, uh, he's eight and a half. He was, you know, five months old. And I went surfing with my daughter, Tamarin. And I was riding in a lyre, a piece of wood for the first yeah, time, yeah. and super hyper extended. It's like you're swimming, you know what I mean? And then I got this weird tingle down my forearm. I was like, what is that? That's odd. It went in my fingers, and then it, went, it only stayed 10 minutes, and then it went away, and I kept surfing, and I was thinking it was just that um, I pinched a nerve or something was on up in there. And then I uh, went home and was on the couch, you know, three, four hours later, doing some work on the computer. And it came back, and I got down the ground and got a ball out and was rolling on the tennis ball and massaging away, thinking, I'll fix it. Wow. <laughs> and then I, then I started to feel clammy and, and you know, just not well, not right. And I knew I might pass out, so I went into the bedroom, and Lion was getting breastfed by his, by his mum there. And they looked at me and went, you don't look too good. She did well, You still had no idea it was a heart attack, you going? Um... Round about then, I thought something yep. was going on. Yeah, you know, and then we jumped in the car and drove to the hospital straight away, which is not the right thing to do. You should be in the ambulance and they can start working on you straight away. Yeah. But I suppose having Lion in the back, Bob, how's this story? You, yep. I, yep. he was he was in the back, and I would he would start losing it. He's only a little kid, five months old, and I'd have to Bob, I'd move away from you and not look at you and go. Take some breath and they go, it's okay, little so buddy. Good. You're all right, man. We're all right, man. Just don't we drive. You'll be wow. good, little buddy. I can imagine that scene. It's okay, mate. Don't cry. Everything's all right. Really. You know, I was going from heart attack to you, you know, backwards and forwards on the road. Um, and then the... straight into surgery and the stent put in the sure. circumflex artery that afternoon. Yeah. You know? How'd you feel? Oh. How's the recovery after that? You're lying there and they're like, okay, Mr. Lynch, you should start feeling pretty good in a minute. And then it, you know, the, the stent <laughs> opens the tunnel yes, up and the blockage is, and all of a sudden the blood starts moving in your back. It's incredible. feeling good. Incredible. It's incredible. See, that's, there, that's the miracle of modern medicine, isn't the, it? And, and in those emergency situations, yeah. it's, you know, yeah. even the hip replacement where you've got that long term, you know, repetitious. Injury to that part of your body to be able to get a new business. <laughs> thank you. Sincerely, you know, thank you. Compare, people, you know, we can get into this polarizing type situation yeah. where people bag out medicine and, yeah. and compare it to something. But I compare, for example, if the house is on fire, do we call a carpet or the, or the fire brigade? Yeah, yeah. In that regard, we call the fire brigade, yeah. obviously. So, fire brigades, right? Yeah. The doctors that come along, they've done an amazing job. What I see is we often rely on the same fire brigade yeah, yeah, pressure, yeah, yeah. to help us rebuild the house. Yeah, right. Well, I don't yeah, know whether yeah, that was your case or not, but did yeah. you get sound advice about what you should do after it, how your diet yeah. should change? Or... Well, yeah, my wife is extremely well-researched yep. in, in the world of natural health and is, you know, very, very sensitive to things. And I remember her, we were in the shower shampooing and she's or, or someone, and she's talking about the soap you're using or the shampoo that you're sure. using going into the, into it. And I'm thinking, I've never thought that deeply. Sure, of the toxins. Yeah, the toxins yeah. in the shampoo. You know, I'd yeah. always, I hadn't worn deodorant because I'd always figured putting those chemicals under your yeah, arms sure. is a really bad idea. Yeah, yeah. I don't know that that's been studied or not. Just but that's sense. but again, that's my. I yeah, always yeah. knew that. Yeah. You know, and then they put the Walkmans on their ears and blare the music and go, oh, hearing's being it. You go, really? Wow. You know, so there's things you can figure out for yourself, isn't there, in that sense. But Holly's always kind of been there to, as a, a rudder for our... Oh, uh, good job. For yeah. our family to, you know what I mean, and keep, yeah. keep those 
And isn't that important, man, when you have family on board? I say that all the time, how they yeah. can influence you towards health or away from it. Mm, totally. If, if, you, if your wife, you know, drank alcohol and exactly. gambled and smoked cigarettes. Exactly. You know, you're in that position where your lifestyle's getting dragged that way. And it's, it's often you see the family resemblances in a group, don't you, when you see them together and you go, oh, look, and, and I suppose now we kind of look and can go, oh, geez, their diet mustn't be very good. You know what I mean? You, you can make the assumption, you can see it. You can see the diet. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a shame, it's conditioning. Yeah, and that's, that's right. really important. And the thing. options. And if people are in an environment that isn't healthy for them and they recognise that, they've got to change it. It's yeah, their life. It. And that's your responsibility. Yeah. I always say, you know, you, your responsibility for anyone's is to make themselves happy. Make yourself happy. Make yourself proud. Make yourself stand up and be. You know, like what you see in the mirror through the way you're behaving. Yeah, good point. And if you don't, then it just takes discipline and it's hard to come by. But at a point you, it's like, you know, alcohol and, and partying and stuff. I just, there's a point where you just can't stand yourself. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're yeah, in yeah. moments of just yeah, going, like, yeah. I can't even stand it. Yeah. I can't believe you're doing it. So it gets us on that level. It oh, just, just makes everything more difficult. You just go, mate, you've got to stop. You know inside you what you've got to do. You've got to take control. You're a, and pe some people need to go to meetings or to groups or to create yes. find support from other people in doing that. I fortunately never really have. I've been able to quit, <laughs> drop everything that I've needed yeah. to. Yeah. With, But then some people need to get to the bottom, don't they? Go, well, you know, I, I, I suppose not, I have been I'm not been surfing. Too. I'm not relating to my family the way I want to. Just this not is being, the change. not making myself proud, but I've got to change who I am and what I'm doing and how I'm living and you know, create some goals and start working one decision at a time towards them. That's all you've got. Mate, thank you so much for your wisdom. Yeah. Let's get Love your face you, down. Your say, mate. What about <laughs> one day we should get together and tell them the story of Peru? <laughs> we'll do that for them, mate. Yeah, that was a wild experience, yeah, it was, wasn't it? <laughs> Yeah, we were together through, you know, made, but I think the wildest experience I've ever had in surfing at a surfing competition in that, in that whole world. So we'll share that with you one day. That was incredible. That was incredible. Thank you, everybody. You know what?